fans of science fiction wargaming models, independent manufacturers and retro throwbacks. Thank you very much for joining me for an unboxing video. And firstly, well, happy new 2023. It is a new year if you are a user of the Gregorian calendar or its derivatives. So yes, I hope you're all well and had a good festive holiday. Got something a little bit different for you today. Uh, you may remember sometime, I think it was last year, it might be even a little bit the year before, I reviewed a model from a little independent company called Battle Castings, which is owned by a guy called John Lander. And this was this fella here. The Cutlass Class War Strider. Time has moved forward and Mr. Lander has been busy. And we have a new kit to review today. And he's very kindly sent me a review copy to look at. And this is something that I think you'll find very, really interesting. Well, I certainly find it interesting. And it's this. It is the Battle Tank of the Future. Known as the Lang Pattern Assault Tank. 28mm scale resin model kit. So this is from Battle Casting. Battle Castings, uh, this is uh, model BC002, so this is John's second kit that is released as part of this company. So he's very kindly sent me this copy to unbox and review. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to open up the box, show you the parts, we'll take a look at it, see what it's like, get a feel for the quality, take a look at all these options that it says is included. So we have um, some multi-guns, some heavy cannons, a couple of presumably Pintle weapons maybe, a spare piece of track, and it says supplied unassembled and unpainted for experienced models only 14 plus magnets provided. Oh, so magnets are included, so that's interesting. We can have a little think about that. So yeah, in this video, we're going to look at what's in the box. Then I'm gonna go away and build it, and we'll come back and we'll review the finished model and I'll share some thoughts on it. So a couple of things before we start. So firstly, my voice is a little bit off at the moment. I had flu over Christmas. I'm just about recovered now, but still getting there. Yes, if my voice is a little bit off, apologies, that is why. And secondly, as I said, this kit has been sent to me as a review copy. So as usual, you know my approach to review copy reviews i'll show you the miniature when i think stuff is good i'll point that out if there are flaws or faults of it i will draw your attention to those as well but please bear that in mind when appraising the opinions offered in this video so without further ado let us unleash the model from the forges of terror which i'll see if we can um get past this um purity seal or the seal of opening Seal of not opening, I suppose, because the seal of opening wouldn't probably be much good, would it? So inside we have some things that I'm going to proceed to drop. Right, so we have a couple of things advertising John's services. You can check him out on social media. I'll leave links to his Instagram account, which is where I know him from. We get an instruction sheet of paper. Lang stroke Ford pattern assault tank. So... You can pause or go slow and have a read here. A little bit of uh, info about, obviously, modelling. Now, you know, this is a fairly small business. This is what you might call, like, garage kit production. So I would expect a little bit more work to do than with something that would come out of a multi-million pound company who does kits. We can give it a bit more latitude than that. Now, here we have the instructions. So the hull, we've got kind of like a fairly straightforward design. We've got a central box, like the main probably crew area, two track units with the actual tracks fitted, so don't have to go through that rigmarole, which is nice. Uh, a side unit, so you've got the doors and then places for the main weapons. And I presume that this weapon here, which is like a multi-stack weapon, perhaps we could call it, I don't know, a cyclonic gun array. Presumably we can go in place of these energy cannons, or, well, they look like energy cannons. Yeah, that's, a, that's the instructions, yeah. So, that's fine. Right. Now, the real meat and potatoes, the actual kit itself. Things have been individually bagged. Go to the magnet straight away. So those uh, are those six millimeter by three millimeters. So they're quite chunky. They're N52, probably, well, N35 grade, maybe N52, probably N35. So those are quite hefty magnets. So straight off about, those feel like the sort of size of magnet you would want for this sort of model. So we get one, two, three, four, five bags of parts. 
and then we're on to the larger components as you can see so let's start with these larger components let's get some of these out this is all being packed by hand but it's been well packed as well let's start with this piece so for fans of Rick Mail and Adrian Edmondson 90s comedy uh, this is the part for you as you can see here so this presumably is the floor or bottom of the vehicle uh also i think yeah it's pretty good pretty good a little bit of cleanup to do around the sides overall that feels nice yeah that's a that's not a bad cast part at all so we've got the floor we've got then two side units so you're going to have the whole uh, the track unit and then this side it's going to go on to that so what do we have here so one of the things I'm interested in looking for in this review is to see what the shapes are like on this model because the original model, the War Strider, the Cutlass War Strider, it was a 3D model and one of the things I observed and some of the people who commented on the video observed was the polygon count perhaps wasn't as high as they would like, which I think was a fair criticism. You can do some work to remove the polygon ridges. But I will be wondering if we see that in this particular model or if that's something that John has addressed with this one. So I suppose first up, I can't really see any evidence of uh, polygonal artifacts. It feels, uh, feels pretty clean, nice and dry cast. There's a fair bit of cleanup work to do around this with the old joint. A bit of knife work, wet sanding, you'll probably get rid of that. And then some filler, for example, milliput to fill any remaining imperfections. Bit of work to do here to restore this edge, which has a, a slight dint in it. Not terrible though. Yeah, it's not bad at all actually. Some interesting um, shapes in the cast as well with these large hollow areas. And certainly um, from this piece, we straight away get a feeling for the futuristic sci fi tank that this perhaps draws some inspiration from. Let's have a look at the other side. So this is the right hand side of the vehicle. So this looks to be in effect a mirror of the left hand side piece. And the casting looks about a comparable level. Slight bit, this bit's a bit better, we haven't got that slight imperfection there. Overall that's pretty good. Mm. Very smooth cast. Doesn't feel to be a lot of release agent on it, uh, which is always nice to see. So now we've got a few more hull components. This is the upper hull. Uh, there we go. This is a nicely detailed piece. Some big, hefty rivet details. Because, you know, riveting tanks is a thing, or it certainly was once upon a time. And... Yeah, tops. Nice to know. It's a nice little call out that the orientation has been added to these two components just to help with the assembly. Maybe a little bit of a warp on this, I think, which will just need heat bending out. Not unsurprising on a resin kit. I don't know if you've built any number of resin kits, but most of the uh, large resin models I've built, mainly from Forgeal, but from other companies as well, have needed some heat bending to get the warps out, particularly on vehicles. It could be less of an issue on walkers, but vehicles where things need to line up more is a thing. So then we've got a rear and a front. So sticking with the, we're going to label the parts to help the builder. That's good. Yep, that looks fine. And then the front, which orientates that way. Yeah, I mean, there's a bit of cleanup to do around it, but overall, the alignment is good. I'm happy with the alignment on that piece, on all these pieces here. That's well done, that is. Good, okay. Let's now do the two main track units. So these are quite hefty. I'm intrigued to see how they'll come out with such large casts. So here is the first. Okay, so some, there's an interesting story here, isn't there, in the piece I can see already. So firstly, nice to see the track moulded on. This saves an enormous amount of hobbying work. And it also opens up opportunities, as you can see here, whereby we've got track sag. Quite nicely modelled, and real-world tank tracks tend to sag like this, where they're sort of carrying on the return leg of their travel. Let's have a look. There's quite a lot going on here. What do we think? 
interesting little bit of a story. You can see that it um, appears to be some join here. Now, I don't know if this was originally done as two pieces and then John's revised the design to make it into one, but you can still see a few artifacts of that. Interesting. No evidence of any polygonal artifacts here. We've got some interior detail here, which is going to be visible once the side unit is attached. Which, now I don't know how good a fit I'll get here, because nothing's cleaned up yet. So, roughly, very roughly speaking, it goes like that. But you'll be able to see the detail through those apertures. That's a nice little feature. Right, so, looking at this, what was it like cleanup wise So there's a fair old bit of cleanup to do around the track unit. There's some track links which have got some nicks in them, which you may want to repair. And then there's an air bubble, a few air bubbles here and there. Not too bad. These are interesting here. You see these little dots here. These look like scaffold artifacts from a 3D print. Obviously, this isn't 3D printed. This is resin cast. But I wonder if the master was 3D printed. In that case, that answers our question around polygon count it seems to be not evident as it was on some of the parts of the cutlass definite bow on this so that this whole piece need heating up and just bending back into shape so it's just got a little bit of a twist on it some quite hefty bits of cleanup to do in inside some of these tracks now depending how you're going to paint it if you're going to cake the tracks in mud then sometimes you know doing a lot of work to get bits like this perfectly cleaned up and reformed may not matter because the mud's going to hide it anyway Overall, that's, uh, that's not bad. Certainly, it's got quite a complex geometry, that part, and this large hollow section. Very interesting. A little bit of damage on this wheel here. That looks like it was cast that way. So I don't know if that's a feature of the mould. Well, maybe not. The others look okay. So let's put that one there, then. Now let's get the second one out. So, same again. Reverse side, so this time we've got the left one. Got a repeat on the detailing panels here and here. Again, uh, just very rough positions. Just going to go like that. Let's get a little tour around the track. Quite a, a gnarly bit on that track link there. That might be okay once it's cleaned up. If not, a little bit of filler, super glue filling will do the trick. More evidence of some 3D origin here. Some more what appear to be remnant scaffold posts. Should be fairly easy to clean up. I mean, I suppose someone might say, oh, that's not very good that you've got these artifacts on it. But I do see 3D printer artifacts on forgeal models frequently, very frequently. I mean, even the, the one of the most recent ones, which was the Cronus Pattern Iron Crawler, which is a plastic resin hybrid for Necromunda. I bought myself one of those and I'm currently building it. And there are some parts there which have got some 3D printing artifacts. So even at Forge World, which is part of the largest company building mass-produced resin kits, they still get some of these things. So it, it, it's not unforgivable to see them on a, a batch-produced kit like this from a, you know, like I said, in effect, a garage kit. But that's nice. Yeah, again, it's uh, it's nice and clean, nice and clean the class. It cast, not classed, cast. That's my voice playing up. It's got a slight bow on it, again, going this way, so it's going to need straightening a bit, like the other one. This isn't as extreme. But yeah, overall, that's, that's really nice. And I like the design as well. As you can see from the War Strider, this is a good-sized tank, this is. Right, let's have a look at some of these detail bags. Oh, wait, before we do that, we've got a pair of what I can best describe as Flash Gordon-esque energy cannons. These are the main guns for the side of it. So these are pretty hefty. So here we've got a bit more work to do in the realm of tidying up 3D printer artifacts. There's quite a bit to do here, actually. So it'd be nice to see a bit more work done in the manufacturing phase with the master to get rid of these, get them completely smooth. So I think that could be done. And doing things like that would just raise the quality on these kits out a little bit more, which would always be nice to see. Otherwise, not bad. The cast has, you know, some old lines. There aren't really mold slips on these to remove and some holes to fill as well. Uh, no, maybe that's not supposed to be a hole. I'm not sure. No, actually, that's a cooling vent. Uh, it's been cast with muzzles done which is a, a nice feature yeah, not bad quite chunky i suppose you could always put your own 
Weapons on the side, if any of them supplied aren't to your taste. And then the other set. Uh, uh, this is a, the prep work's been done to a high degree here in terms of removing those 3D print scaffolds compared to that one. It's just there. But this one is better than that one, so maybe that's something that could be a, improved in the kit. I was a little bit there actually now I'm seeing it. A bit of a room for improvement there. But the polygon count on these looks fine to me. These look very cylindrical. I can't see any evidence of a low poly count on cylinders and spheres that are being used to construct these. Not bad, not bad at all. Right, we've got some bagged parts now. Let's stick with the theme of guns and ammo. So what did I call these? A cyclone storm guns. And they have a winged skull device on them. Perhaps the symbol of some far future faction. Yeah, an interesting design, that. Some perhaps passing resemblance to a gyrojet derived weapons from other sci fi universes. So I presume those two go together, something like so. How's it go? Dropping bits now. Oh, I, I see, I think. I think, and I'm just making this up. I think it's something like that. And then that hangs from there, like so. And if we look at these spaces here, those are the correct size, I presume, for the magnets. Let's now do a little magnet test. It's a bit shallow, but it fits. And that, again, it's a bit shallow. So I think with both of those, um, the magnets are the correct diameter. They're a bit deep. So they might want drilling out a little bit more, otherwise you're going to have a gap of magnets. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that. I'll have to try to find that out later. In terms of these, yeah, nice detailing on these. Some mould, slightly slippy bits to clean up there. Make a bit of a mess here now. And there's one, another one of the mountain brackets. There's a, a bit more clean up to do here, maybe. Maybe that'll clean up with a knife. If not, that'll just need filling in that um, old slip there. What else we got? Got more cyclonic auto gun arrays. Let's now do the detail bags. So those bits in general, there's a fair bit of clean up to do on those and some filling, but nothing terrible. And then we've got this thing, which I think is probably the transmission block. Little bits of clean up to do. Overall, it's very nice. Very, very faint striations left from the printing. Nothing that I think would affect the final model though. That's good. And then got a... Uh, oh no, I think this is supposed to be the engine. Yeah, yeah, this is supposed to be the engine, not the transmission. This is a transmission block. There you go, with the drives, final drive. Let's hope that's a strong final drive. We wouldn't want it breaking down, would we? And these are two exhaust pipes or exhaust feeds for the engine unit. So they're a bit... Um, a little bit scratchy, quite a bit of clean up to do on there to see how I go with those. Not terrible though, everything's more or less lined up. There's just a just a bit of a rough finish on the pipes. And then we've got just two more bags of parts. The first of which is the doors. It's not a band reference, by the way. So we've got some this nice sort of like internal grill, we've got a vision slit, a pair of handles. So this bit here is light grey area, that's an air bubble, so you have to carefully land that and then fill it with some putty or glue. You need to do that carefully, because as, as long as I can fill it, I won't lose the shape, and I'll save myself some time with the repair. Oh, they look good, and uh, those are going to drop into this space here. I don't think it really has interior detail. Um, there you go, nice fit there. Does actually articulate well. It doesn't actually have interior detail. I suppose a very keen modeler could add some if they wanted to. But you know, you've got that option there. You know, certainly creating a separate door gives a modeler more options, which is nice in this instance. And the other one, I guess, is going to go there. Yeah, those fit very well actually for resin cast doors into resin cast sides. Those fit perfectly well. Don't get me started on trying to get forge wall upgrade doors to fit in land raiders. Those things were always a lot of hard work. Right, last thing onto the sort of bits and pieces bag. So in no particular order, we have a smoke discharger, if you can say it right. We actually have better than that. We have a pair. 
and clean up to do on that one, but the other one looks pretty much spot on. We then have a spare piece of track, so a track link. Bit of roughness to clean up on that. We've then got a, I presume this is like a vision port. Yeah, this is sort of like a, the main vision port. And if this is a front, or if I recall correctly, yeah, front. You see, this is such a good kit to review for forgetful people like me. There you go. Goes like that, and then this is going to go here. Good luck, isn't it? So that's that. There's a commander's hatch, a cupola, cupola cover, which is going to go here. Yeah, and that fits. I mean, absolute top points for having resin hatches that fit first off without an absolute battle of cutting them to shape. We've got these two, which are the mounting points for the side guns. So we'll call those sponson guns. And once again, I presume these are recessed for the magnets. And now this time, we've got an exact fit. So those are absolutely spot on. So yeah, very good. And I feel that those should probably be strong enough magnets. I didn't do the test here, so let's see if this fits. Yeah, that fits perfect. So the magnets fit the energy cannons spot on, straight out of the box. The cyclonic gun array, it doesn't. They're a bit proud, so there's probably a bit... The recesses need digging out a bit. Well, digging out is the wrong term. Drilling out a bit to get these magnets to fit. So you've got two options there. One, drill them out to buy some of the slimmer magnets and just save some of those thicker three mil magnets for your magnet collection. Those are your options. Then we have a, another heavy weapon. Presumably this is a pintle mount. And I'm not sure if that broke actually. That's gonna go there. I think this might have broken. Uh, nope. Just checking the instructions. That is actually correct. It just looks like it broke. That's pretty neat. I like the design there. Harks back to uh, certain sci-fi tanks of the late. 80s, good retro feel there. And then finally we have another two weapon options. Now these are kind of interesting in how they're, they've got these grooves. So where are these supposed to go? Uh, I see, right. So we've got an, a bigger version or a comparable version of that gun, which is, looks like a hefty version of the like equivalent of a heavy machine gun. But this time it's mounted into the hull. And then we have this as well, which looks like very nice to cast. These are lovely cast A little bit clean up there, but oh, this to me looks like some sort of thermal cannon, like a heat ray. And what we do is we take little groovettes here, and they're designed to sort of slide into the front hull like so. Like so. So that one, that one fits noticeably better. So you can tool this thing up with a load of extra weapon. Uh, you need to work around the vision slit though to get them all to fit. I have to look at the finished model to try to figure out how they go, but you, know, you can do that, which is quite a, a neat way of mounting weapons. Uh, something a little bit original there. Not bad, not bad at all. There's actually a lot going on in this model. And that is everything. If we uh, don't forget our little stack of magnets, interestingly on the magnet front we get, like we get 10. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, yeah, so you get the correct number of magnets. So just remember though, if you're gonna use these magnets for this and you want them, the weapons to be all flush, you'll need to do a bit of drilling to get these deeper. So there we go, that's quite a long review. I hope you found it interesting. A look at the Lang Patton Assault Tank. Don named this Lang part of it in memory of his brother, which I think is a really nice touch and a, a great way to remember him by. So yeah, that if you're wondering why it's called the Lang Patton, you now know. So, I hope you found this an interesting review of an unusual kit from someone at the smaller end of the sci-fi resin tank market. I'd just like to say thanks again to John for sending me this copy for review. It's always a pleasure to look at these independent, intriguing models. And to all you viewers, again, I hope you found this an interesting review. Do share your thoughts and observations and comments. I will leave a link. So I think these are on sale now, so if you are interested, you can check that out as well. And I will do a follow-up video once I've built this and give you my thoughts on the assembly process. And we'll have a look at the completed vehicle as well and see what we think. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.